things here before we get to questions. Uh, um, you know, certainly with Coach Leach passing, uh, oh, what a wonderful guy. Uh, I really enjoyed our conversations and, uh, you know, our thoughts and prayers are out uh, to his family and to the Mississippi State uh, fan base, players, um, and all the people that he affected in his life and his certainly his his family. Um, Hunter and I, we're going to just practice on Tuesday, get a little bit earlier so we can go give the man and his family the respect that they certainly deserve. And, and uh, just a, a wonderful, wonderful person and and I sure was glad that he was in my life. Um, we hired Ben Souders um, as a strength coach. I think you guys may have interviewed him. I've been here for a couple of weeks, a lot of energy. The kids seem to really uh, enjoy him and his work, and I'm really excited about that. We hired Morgan Turner uh, as our tight end coach. Uh, I felt like it was – I felt like he was as good as any tight end coach in the country. Certainly his resume with eight guys that he's coached in the league, I think seven of those eight drafted, I think it speaks for itself. And we're ecstatic that we have a a good coach uh, for these guys at, at, at tight end. Uh, we'll practice uh, today, tomorrow, uh, over the next 12 days before the game. Uh, we will practice nine of the twelve game, nine of the twelve days. Uh, we'll go shells today. We probably won't really get into Kansas prep until Monday. All our coaches have been on the road. Uh, we have had one practice, but uh, we'll have today and tomorrow, and it will be basically us versus us, and then get a little bit into uh, get into uh, Kansas uh, starting on Monday. Um, the defensive coordinator hire, we're closing in on that. Um, you know, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do as far as announcing that. I think I'm weighing, um, uh, our program, uh, possibilities of hurting our recruiting versus hurting, uh, somebody else's, some uh, other universities recruiting. Uh, it is so close, um, to signing date. So I'm closing in on that. I just don't know when I'm comfortable with making a d decision as far as when to announce that. Um, again, I'm weighing a lot of things uh, for our university and our players first and foremost and, and others as well. So I think that's where we're at right now and be happy to answer any questions. Is December your new favorite month with uh... – you said it was going to be chaotic, but with the yeah. transfer portal, recruiting, coaching changes, preparing for a bowl game, I mean, is this is this sustainable? No, I don't. I think some time frame from the NCAA has to change, I think. Um, it's a lot uh, right now, but everybody's, everybody's having to deal with it. Um, certainly when you add – and I'm proud. I'm happy for Barry that he, you know, got a head coaching job at UNLV, and I'm happy for Dow that he got a coordinator job from a tight end coach. Um, but that adds to it as well. You know, you're you're not only flying around the country trying to see guys. I, I like what we did, Trey. In other words, uh, we went out and tried to hit all 23 commitments the first week. You know, between the Friday. Uh, the first day out and and the commitments uh, the first week so we could kind of fly around to different portal guys, you know, and, and make that a priority as well. Um, but uh, adding you, – you're trying to hire two coaches, that, that adds a little bit to it. Adding that you're in a bowl, which we're very happy we are, adds a little bit to it. And then the portal, you know, kids um, – you know, there's a lot going on in the portal, and the portal taketh and it giveth, and uh, that's just what happens. Uh, you know, we try to keep every kid that uh, certainly on the team, uh, but if they feel like there's a better opportunity for them out there, then you know, it's it's like anything. If somebody wants to get in the portal, then uh, if your wife wants to get in the portal, it's hard to hard to bring her back. And uh, at some point, you're going okay. 
uh, I'll go replace her. And uh, so you, you kind of have to have that uh, mindset because uh, then it becomes just woe is me. And uh, our mindset is uh, whomever decides they want, would like to do that. We, we certainly love them. We want them to stay, but if they decide to go, then our mindset is we're going to go replace them. And uh, that's, that's where we're at with all those things. I think we can understand most of the guys that enter the portal with playing time and things like that. Um, we already talked about Miles Slusher, but were you surprised by Trey Knox and Keytron Jackson and their decision? And I know other every player, everybody's losing players for various um, reasons. But for guys. A little bit, you know. Um, um, a lot of factors go into that. You know, other schools, uh, uh, NIL, uh, there's a lot of factors, not not getting enough balls, you know, all kinds of stuff uh, goes into that. And uh, uh, we'll certainly support those guys uh, any way we can. But, you know, once you go on the portal, uh, obviously I've said before that you can't come back. And that's, you know, certainly you, you have to change your mind a little bit on that uh, as far as um, maybe trying to get somebody back as long as it's a reason not other than Arkansas is not good enough for me. Um, obviously, nobody wants a coach, a player, or anybody that feels that way. They they need to go. Uh, but um, I've changed a little bit more. We haven't brought anybody back lately in the portal, but I've changed a little bit because some of these guys, you know, they there's a lot of different things going on out there, a lot of phone calls, phone calls to coaches, all this. Um, a lot of stuff going in NCAA that certainly – um, that I would consider not necessarily up on the up and up. And uh, so you confuse these kids' minds by uh, what could happen, you know, and certainly they can catch a, a thousand balls and make this kind of money and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's confusing for a young man. It's not fair for him. Uh, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Coach, the, la the last time we talked to you, you sounded kind of confident that you were going to have both your coordinators for the bowl game. Uh, did it catch you off guard at all that Barry left? And what was your reaction when he when he got the head coaching job at UNLV? Well, the last part, I was really happy for him, and I'm happy for UNLV. I mean, they got a really good coach, really good man. Um, catch me off guard, UNLV did. Tulsa, or excuse me, yeah, Tulsa, that, that I, I knew about Tulsa and all that kind of stuff. Uh, not not a whole lot about uh, UNLV. Uh, but, no, I was kind of prepared for that because I knew that he had an opportunities and uh, certainly wanted him wanted, – he, if he wanted them, I wanted him to get them, you know. And and uh, so, no, not really. Uh, it's very difficult, like what Trey's talking about. You know, you lose your defensive coordinator, um, what, now a week, a uh, week and three days ago or whatever, a week and two days ago and you lose him and you're getting ready to go into a home visit, you know, you're going to lose him. So how are you going to, how are you going to talk to the kids? You know, and what I did was uh, I took the parents uh, aside and just said, Hey, tomorrow uh, coach is going to be the new head coach at UNLV and they want to keep it quiet. You know, you worry about other programs. You got to worry about your, your own first. And uh, so, yeah, it, it a little bit, but uh, Dow's was not necessarily a surprise. You know, I talked to Shane, he had called me and talked to him. So, uh, that wasn't really a surprise. And it sounds like you're kind of closing in on that defensive coordinator. So I don't know how you could answer this, but I'm curious what you were looking for in a defensive coordinator. Do you like the, the veteran experienced guy like you had with Barry or is are you more flexible because you're more comfortable having the experience you have now or what direction were you looking to go for with that hire? Well, I, I want, uh, and when you answer questions like this, sometimes it's taken as you're 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 knocking the past. I, I'm not, and by any, I'm very happy. Um, but we need a guy that uh, can recruit. I think that's a a big part. Uh, I'll never forget when I went to Georgia. Kirby said, "You got to change your room. You know, you have to." And uh, uh, especially with the portal going on right now. Um, uh, you've got to have somebody that can recruit. I'd like to have somebody that's multiple. I'd like to get enough to a, a four-man front more. And I think that our our strengths uh, go to that a little bit more now than than what we were in the past. Um, and I want a guy. That, I want a good man, the one that 
that gets along with his staff, that players respect. And uh, I'm looking for a little – I'm looking for some aggressiveness out of that coordinator. And – and uh, but I think I said recruiting, coaching, those two things are big. And, and then what kind of person is he? Will he will he be able to go get players and will he be able to keep them? And uh, you're not be able to keep all of them. I, I get that. I don't believe any schools keeping all of them, but uh, uh, that's what I'm looking for, and I think I've found it in in uh, two or three guys. To be honest with you, your wide receiver room has undergone some transformation since mm -hmm. the last game. Um, Matt looked good to stay on playing the bowl game, and who all who all else does KJ have to throw to? Well, he's got all you know. He's got Bakke, and he's got. Uh, um, uh, Bryce Stevens and he has uh, Jaden uh, Wilson and uh, let me think here uh, who am I missing young guys Bakke I talked about Satagna yeah got him um, so uh, we're we're a little short there um, uh, in numbers uh, really in ex in playing experience. Uh, you know, we went out and won the Outback Bowl last year without Burks. Um, we did not just light it up in the air as, as well, you know. I think we were like around 100 yards. But it's time, Rogers, Landon Rogers. it's time for these guys. Chris Harris is a guy that can go, Harper Cole. Um, it's time for these guys. We talked about it being next year, and I know we've got a couple of young guys coming in, and then certainly uh, we, we have to go in the portal there. Not necessarily – to put these guys on a bench just we 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 don't have very many on scholarship uh so there and then of course Hudson Henry's going to play uh, in the bowl and backs and and we found out um today the NCAA or yesterday passed the rule with Tyrus Washington where um your fifth game would not count towards uh el you know eligibility numbers so he'll be able to play uh, which he, we were holding him at four, so he'll be able to activate and play as well. I think that was a great rule, especially with the numbers are down probably for a lot of teams, and and I think that was a great rule. Hey, thanks for coming, Zach. You saved us a question. <laughs> Linebacker position. Will will Jordan Crook maybe yeah. be a starter? And what about the whole rest of the position? Any guys that you would, would play that might happen got a lot of playing time? Well, so. you know, I think Manny Powell would be a guy, certainly. Uh, you know, Brooks both is a guy as well. And, of course, Woodard's played uh, special teams all the time, so he'll have to move up to that three or four linebacker spot. But I think, you know, uh, you got you have Pooh and, and, and Crook, and those two guys will uh, – and with Manny Powell and Woodard, they, they, that would probably be your, your four guys there. And, of course, Caden Henley's going to have to step up as well. Coach, um, status of Torian Carter, Jalen St. John, moving forward. Oh, Jalen St. John still still suspended indefinitely, and and uh, Torian Carter will not play in the in the bowl game. Is that is that due to injury or it eligibility? Is. No, it's just you know we talked about. It. I sat down and talked to him about it, and and I just don't know. Uh, Dave didn't feel like he was really going to be ready, ready, you know, fully. He's moving, running, doing some great things. Uh, but if you think about it, if you can hold him uh, one more game, then that, that allows him to have certainly another three months of healing. And uh, it hadn't been the nine-month nine month usual deal. And so uh, between myself and Torin, we decided that that would probably be the smartest thing to do with him. With the uh... – Recruiting is about relationships. Obviously, you say that all the time, but um, it's also about money now. And yeah, it is. And do you feel like you guys at Arkansas have the resources from an NIL, NIL standpoint to build a quality roster? Because I mean, so much of it comes down to that. And I don't know how the inner workings work with like, hey, we can get you this or that. I don't even know yeah. if you can even say that yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can't. But um, yes, we we have resources here. Uh, there's certainly universities out there that have a lot more than we do, some that have a lot less. Um, but we do have the resources, and and uh, I still don't believe in buying players. Um, 
I believe in somebody that wants to come to the university and then you talk about, you know, what they might be able to do in your, in their name, image, and likeness program. But, um, yeah, the way of football going right now is, uh, is, uh, uh, disturbing a little bit. We get more questions from parents about that and homes. Mm, just every one of them other than that no, no i mean it's a thing of the world now listen i don't want to i don't want to sit here and act like we're not prepared for that or that we we don't have anything here at arkansas we do um and we have adjusted with that and those things but uh yes it's it's a conversation in everyone that you recruit you talked about you've kind of changed your rule on coming back. Do you have somebody that's in the portal that may be wanting to come back? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Um, I just think right now when 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 someone's trying to get one of your players and it's not real, I don't know if it's fair to the guy to go in the portal thinking this and then it becomes not real. And if they if they'll make up what they missed and – if it's not leaving Arkansas because Arkansas not, so is not good enough for them, then we'll have that conversation. But no, I don't have anybody right now. I know you can't comment on, but you've got three commitments in the portal yeah. right now. What what are the priorities beyond what you have? And like I said, I know you can't comment on them, but what's beyond? What yeah. what's the biggest needs beyond that? Well, I think we we need to add uh, some receivers. I think where we are tied in wise, I believe. Uh, we may need to add a tight end. Um, we're still looking for a uh, premier pass rusher, uh, possibly. Uh, that would be my least concern right there, right now. Uh, I believe we need some veteran linebackers, and uh, certainly we need some uh, more more players in the, in the uh, secondary. Again, you asked a question, I answered it. Uh, that's not to say that we don't have good players on our team, and I explained it to our team that way as well. Uh, as we continue to go, it's not necessarily looking for uh, – it's not a guy that has to come in and start. And that, but we, we've we learned a lesson last year uh, at a lot of positions that you have to improve your talent because of injury. And uh, we got in a – we got a little bit of problem because of that last year at times. Like y'all were able to move pretty quick with getting Morgan Turner. How did that come about? Did you have a relationship with him or – I had talked to – uh, Coach Shaw, you know, and and talk to talk to Morgan's dad, Ron, you know, and and uh, talk to the D coordinator at Stanford. Uh, I talked to a lot of people, and I, I, to be honest with you, once I saw his resume and you know Stanford and uh, what he had done out there, I wanted to hire him, but um, I couldn't find a reason not to. Um, I. I it would be hard pressed to me to have a tight end coach that's had more success with uh, tight ends than him. And uh, so I just, I really liked him. I was uh, out on the road. Uh, you guys know where I were. They were tagging the, the plane or whatever you call that. So I'm, and I did not. So the poor guy at Maryland, I did not interview him for the job. You know, I felt terrible. You know, I'm sure his coach was running in there going, what's going on? But uh, I was up to see a couple of <laughs> recruits, and then I flew down, and uh, Coach Turner was in Miami recruiting, and you know I'd hired him that day, and I said, well, we'll just come down there and pick you up. So that's what we did. I know you can't talk specifics with, with the recruiting or whatever, but you've got some pretty good tight end commitments. Uh, I guess he went and saw him. Was yeah. he well-received as having a guy like that of his caliber – give you confidence you can be able to, to keep those guys? Well, I think it did on on all of them, uh, to be honest with you. Um, we're, we're trying to hold on uh, to guys going and visiting, you know, guys that have been re recruited by us for a long time. And and uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to hold on to every one of them from not going to a visit. Um, but I think at least a couple of them won't, and uh, they'll be – They'll be here for us, but uh, I think he made a nice impression on from talking to the parents after after he left. I sent Kendall with him. I just didn't want to send him in there by himself. Uh, 
which is another st another problem with w what's going on right now because instead of going out and seeing the high school kids right now, you're either going to the portal if you lose a coach, you're going to the guys. You know, it's, it's a lot of things going on. Everybody's dealing with it, but – uh, will it hurt high school recruiting? I believe it. it. I believe that it will, and it is. I don't think I've seen this anywhere. But what's the game plan for who's going to call defense in the bowl yeah. game and coordinate? Be the defensive coordinator. Well, no, it's a great question. I I, I had it uh, written down right here, but Mike will call the game. Sheer, he'll call the game, and and uh, and uh, we'll go from there. But he'll he'll call the game. He's actually really tight with Barry. I mean, he's Barry's guy, so yeah. to speak. So there's been speculation he might maybe he'll go be Barry's DC. Is yeah, that that'd be good for do, recruiting? Do, wouldn't do, it? Do, nice do, question. Yeah. Sorry. Do, 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 I mean, no, let's what, get it out there. What's what, what's 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 going? I'm, I'm sure you get asked. Um, what, what what's going on with that? Do you expect to retain Michael, or you he might I go with to. Barry? I hope so. Um, Barry has not spoke with me about it, and and as of today, Mike hadn't talked to Barry about it. Um. Certainly, we want guys to do what's best for them and all that. But you know, it's just like I've told the recruits, Mike Shear has a job here as long as he wants one, and I think he likes it here. And, um, well, why did you decide him? He's obviously a young guy. You have some other guys with well, – why did you decide Michael, and what do you think he brings to that situation? Well, you know, I, I had talked to Barry, to be perfectly honest with you, and I talked about and, – and they're kind of doing it by committee because I have Deke, you know, who's, who's done and You know, you have Bowman and – uh, but talking to Barry, he just felt like, uh, and I asked him, you know, cause I, that's, that's kind of how I felt that Mike, Mike would be the guy to call the game and organize it, but they're all in there working together and all that. Michael just happened to be, be calling the plays that they've all decided, you know how it is. You decide what you're doing and then they, you look on the thing and you call it, you know, and you have to have a little bit of, of, uh, sense of what they're getting ready to do and those things. But, uh, that's really why I just talked to Barry about it. And that's that's really, honestly, that's how I felt about it too. So I just kind of just wanted to be confirmed. Any update on Jalen Catalan? Uh, I had a talk with him today. Um, I think he's leaning towards going into the portal. Um, but uh, I don't believe it's that he has yet or anything of that nature. But um, I – from my conversation with him today that he was leaning towards going into the portal. Is that just wanting a fresh start? Is it something with Barry Odom or? No, I don't. And I don't, I just think that he, from my conversation, he'll have to tell you, and, but I, I think he just wants a, a fresh start. And, and I talked to him about, you know, if he was going to leave here that, if he wanted my advice, I would just declare for the NFL and and give it that type of chance. But he had a different view on it, and and uh, whatever he wants to do, we'll be fine with it. And and uh, but as of my conversation this morning with him, I think that's probably where he's leaning. I just don't know if he's gone in yet. Obviously, this is a tough business. You've had to let coaches go in the past and stuff. Yeah. I'm curious though on the timing with with Walker right after the Missouri game. Mm -hmm. Did you just feel that was something that needed to be done and had been planned or or just thoughts on your timing with Byron Walker then? Um well first of all he's a good man and a good coach and all those things. Uh, uh I just thought that um we weren't as strong as we needed to be and and uh, the uh we just need to make a change and uh it wasn't anything personal and and uh he did a nice job for us but um i wanted to, to answer your question i wanted um uh all that to happen before monday and uh that's the only way i knew how i could guarantee that that happened before the kids got back in the building on monday just a couple more personnel you've got um mcglothern hasn't a lot of people think he might be a guy that think about the future. Zach Williams, Luke Jones, Nathan Bax, Terry Hampton, Isaiah Nicholson, and Blair Trent Gordon. That's a lot of names, but possibilities to come back as super seniors. Do you think you're going to have a lot of um, super seniors next year? I think on that list of guys you just said, I think the majority of them will come back. Um, I don't believe Luke Jones will. I think we've had that talk, but you went kind of quick on that, but I, I think the majority of the guys you just mentioned 
um, will come back. Um, minus Luke. Luke. Luke's not going to come back. And, and, uh, um, and, but I think the rest of them will. He's playing the bowl game. Absolutely. That's one thing. The rest of the staff, you feel comfortable with wanting to retain the rest of the staff? That the rest of the staff will, will be here next year. Um, yeah, I feel really good about our staff. And um, uh, certainly whomever the defensive coordinator is, it, uh, you know, uh, uh, we'll sit down and talk. But we have a position open, you know, for him. And uh, uh, obviously uh, I feel good about uh, all our guys. Thanks, Coach.